Now, here's a thought, vaping. When it first came out, I thought, ah, this is a good idea because if you want to give up smoking, and I'm a reformed smoker of many years ago, this is something that might be helpful. A lot of criticism being drawn towards vaping, though. It's not all a one-way ticket. However, the government are going to ban it, basically, or they're trying to ban it, um, e-cigarettes for 18 to 21 year olds. Uh, now, Jason Reed, UK lead at Young Voices, is unhappy about this. He thinks it's counterproductive. Jason, welcome to the program. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Now, listen, very, very briefly, so we get to the main core subject. Can you just tell me uh, who are Young Voices and what, what's your mission? So Young Voices is a non-profit talent agency working with young political commentators and uh, helping to promote young people's voices. Great. Well, you are now a voice and you are out here broadcasting. You've written an article in a national newspaper uh, on vaping and why you think uh, the government are wrong to discourage and try and ban young people from using it as an alternative. What's your case? My concern is that this is part of a flood of all kinds of new rules we're seeing from the nanny state. It started with obesity policy um, and it's just looking to govern every aspect of our lives and centralise all of our lifestyle choices into policy making in Westminster. And I think that's it's very concerning. I think that we um, we're a nation that values liberty and we should be allowing people to make their own decisions, whether it's about what they eat or what they smoke. And so my concern is that all these new restrictions are heading us towards a, a a very worrying dystopian future in which we all eat grey sludge because there are so many rules on what we can and can't do or you can't eat that you can't drink that you can't smoke that um, and when it comes to vaping in particular uh, vaping is it seems to me the uh, the solution to smoking it's not part of the problem because it helps so many people switch and it helps people quit cigarettes and so it seems bonkers to me that if what the government's trying to do is to make England smoke free, which is what it's trying to do. That's the name of the strategy is smoke free England. Then it seems absurd to be cracking down on vaping. Now, uh, look, you won't get an argument from me on the libertarian values that you're espousing. But you said that actually um, uh, uh, lots of lots of people are actually uh, using it. Lots of people are making it as a good alternative. Where are the stats for that? Where do you draw your evidence for that from? Um, so of the current e-cigarette vape users in Britain, it's more than half of those vapors. 1.7 million people are former smokers. I think that's a huge number. It's a huge testament to um, just how effective vaping is at helping people quit. It's much more effective than any other method we have for helping people quit smoking, whether it's nicotine patches or just going cold turkey, whatever it is, all the studies show that vaping uh, works in about 74% of cases, which is much, much higher than any other method. And, uh, and because we know that it's so much safer than smoking, it has roughly 0.5% of the lifetime cancer risk that smoking does. It seems to me that more people switching from smoking to vaping is absolutely a good thing. And it's something that we should be encouraging, not trying to crack down on. Now, if I was to put a scientist in front of you, they would tell you that, for example, and I'll probably pronounce this wrong, acetylide, uh, which is in vaping, uh, that is a carcinogenic that, that can cause lung disease uh, as well as cardiovascular disease. Uh, and it contains other uh, extraordinary items like herbicide primarily used to kill weeds. That sounds to me as if they're just as lethal as a cigarette. Well, in public health, terms in terms of people uh, allowing people to live as possible as long as they possibly can do the ideal solution would be to everyone to stop using harmful substances overnight but of course that's not going to happen and there has to come a point where we allow people to take the risks that they want to take uh, with their health um, and that does sometimes mean that people pick up harmful habits or um, make unhealthy choices but that's that's the cost of liberty and I think it's very worth doing and when it comes to vaping in particular going switching from smoking to vaping which is what we're seeing happening in huge numbers is absolutely a step in the right direction um according to public health england vaping overall is about 95 percent safer than smoking so yes it's still not perfect but it's not full of all the same toxic substances that smoking is you know cigarettes are, are full of tar they make your lungs black and vaping doesn't do any of that 
OK, it's before breakfast. I think there's quite enough of that one now. <laughs> Tell me. Um, the, look, any government is going to tell you that the public health of the nation is one of its most important duties to do. So let's kind of accept that as a given. We've seen that, let's face it, for the introduction of some huge, what I would call anti-libertarian uh, uh, moves by the government. Are you concerned, or are you, no, of course you're concerned, but are you surprised that seemingly the most libertarian politician in Britain heading up a conservative government is actually embarking on more banning than I think I've ever seen from a Labour government in my lifetime, which my lifetime doesn't qualify me to be a member of Young Voices. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very well put. It's very surprising and I'm very dismayed about that. Boris Johnson once upon a time would call himself a libertarian. Uh, he used to speak about Britain as being a land of liberty. Uh, he was elected to the position of leadership of the Tory party on a platform of, uh, quote, rolling back the continued creep of the nanny state. Um, he promised a review of sin taxes, all this kind of thing. And none of that has materialized and since he's taken office. And not only have we not made progress in the right direction, we've been making lots of progress, as you say, in the wrong direction, because all of these new bans and new taxes and new restrictions on what we can and can't do in our everyday lives and what we can and can't put into our bodies have been coming through from this conservative government. And I don't think it works in health terms because I don't think it will achieve the outcomes that they say they're trying to achieve. And on a more fundamental level, it's incredibly concerning for individual liberties, for our personal freedoms to be able to do what we want to do. How do you think, uh... Young people now, and, and forgive me, if I, if I take an age group, say, between 20 and 30, actually, now, um, how will they look back in 15 years, 20 years, and uh, look back at a period when this country uh, banned leaving your own country? We were physically stopped from leaving our own country under laws. We have seen, as you said, a series of measures curtailing freedoms coming in in the name of public health, of some which I thought was sensible early on in the pandemic. I fully admit to that. But do you think people will be generous and they will say, well, that was a pandemic, that's fine? Or will they be making a judgment that this was the beginning, and maybe time will only tell, of a return to, as you say, nanny, as nanny state, but I would say as to state authoritarianism. Oh, I nearly got that word right as well. Um, I think we're at a little bit of a crossroads with this pandemic. I agree with you completely that in response to COVID, all kinds of unprecedented measures were needed. But we now face a choice where we have to choose. Either we continue down this road of interfering in people's lives and making health decisions for them, or we recognize that this was a one-off, once-in-a-lifetime pandemic with a novel virus. And if we, if we value liberty as much as we said we used to say we used to, um, in the case of Boris Johnson, then we should go back to uh, allowing people to live their lives the way they want to. And so as for how future historians will look back on this, it depends on the choices we make now and in the coming years. Um, and to be honest, I'm not optimistic. We're seeing this flood of new rules coming in all kinds of new nanny statism in this country that we've not had before. The pernicious influence of the World Health Organization is expanding, I think, on the question of vaping in particular. Um, their organized, the wing of the World Health Organization is called the Tobacco Free Initiative, and yet it's uh, actively undermining the, the tobacco free solution to smoking, which is vaping, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. But it seems that uh, more and more politicians around the world, including in this country, are listening to that and are giving into that. And so it doesn't paint a good picture for the future of civil liberties. Some will call it the age of the scientists. Well, you've got people talking, Jason, someone who describes himself as Prof Professor Hans Faze hyphen space. I have no idea if this is a genuine professor or not. It says, so because vaping doesn't make your lungs black, it's safer than cigarettes, even though it contains many carcinogens and is just as lethal. His argument is clearly flawed. You haven't won everyone over, Jason, but UK voices, young voices have clearly had their voice heard this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. That was Jason Reed, as I say, UK lead at Young Voices, clearly very much in mind of the libertarian 
uh, and the liberties that we've actually given up. And I do urge people just to think about that, not just in 10, 15 years, but now. Coming up after the break, 